Today on Film Right, we take a look at how we did this. Welcome to Film Riot, the show that takes mystery out of the effects and techniques. One of some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Connolly. And before we jump into this... I gotta let you know about some goodness we have going on on the store right now. We've kicked off our summer sale, which is 50% off all of our digital downloads and 20% off all apparel, plus flash sales every other day, which go up to 70% off. And our brand new packs, which are the Cinematic LUT Pack and the Muzzle Flash and Smoke Pack are both on sale now too. So definitely check that out before the prices go back up. But that's it, now this. Did we show that already? Yeah, a couple times. That's my bad. First thing up, of course, is to shoot your footage. Obviously, I... Ryan! Obviously, you would shoot your footage first! What are you gonna do? It's your camera! What are I... we doing first, <laughs> Ryan? Oh my God. I haven't had food today, I'm sorry. <laughs> I shot this at 120 sexy frames per second because I can. You can always have your actor fake the slow-mo and then use time remapping and post to help sell it if you don't have high speed. But now we'll bring our footage into After Effects and then we'll track our gun or the scene or both. Double tracking power! Next thing we want to do is put a 3D null layer at the very opening of the gun barrel. This is our anchor point of sorts because everything coming out of the gun is going to come from this point. And you may have to play with your position and orientation to get it perfect. That's okay. Little side note, all effects from this point on are gonna originate from that null, so unless mentioned, its position has been parented to that null. Side note ended. Now since this is slow motion and we wanna give it more of a cinematic feel, we opted to give it sort of a mini time ramp look, giving it that cinematic stylized feel with an added punchy vibe to it. For the gunfire, we started with HitFilm's gunfire plugin. It allows you to keyframe aspects of the gun and also shut parts of it off. First in the transform dropdown, select the tracked null. This will use the null's position slash orientation for the muzzle flash. Then, over the course of five frames, we scale the transform scale from zero to 20%. Then we keyframed the speed from the start of the previous setting over the course of 10 frames. There was no hard number for this, we just slid the seed number until the result was something we liked. Next, we went five frames in and set the intensity to 75%. Then after another five frames, we set it back down to 0%. We also added easing to all the keyframes to, you know, ease them. Then we added Video Copilot's Color Vibrance plugin to the stack because it's an awesome plugin that, you know what? Instead of explaining, I'm just gonna call the creator of the plugin, my good friend, Andrew Kramer, and let him explain for himself. Ryan, uh -oh. Intercept. <laughs> Probably has his phone off. That's my guess. So within the plugin, we went with a yellow color, then set the layers blending mode to add, and then boom, we got some gun explosions to go. Gun explosion goodness. I feel like I messed that up. Did I say it correctly? No, it was fine. I said gun explosion goodness? No, but it was, it was fine. What? Yeah. Moving on. It's looking good, but doesn't feel quite done. And this is where Sparks and Smoke comes in. For this, we use Trap Code Particular for both the Smoke and Sparks. Double Trap Code Particular Power! Which by the way, if you haven't seen the new effects builder in particular, definitely check that out because it's all the things, just all of them. But for the Sparks, we modified the preset Spark Directional so that it would have a slow velocity. This gives the illusion that it's in slow motion and has drag on it. We didn't change the opacity or size over life because we wanted the Sparks to shut off quickly. Because even though the shot is supposed to be slow motion, Sparks lose energy pretty fast. Again, I use the Color Vibrance plugin mixed with the tint and curves and set the blending mode to add. For the smoke, we use the particular preset smoke trail as a starting point. Then we had this set to explode as well and only set 50 particles per second. For opacity, we turn that down to 50% and with randomness of 80. Life is set to about 4.5 seconds with a randomness of 25. Turbulence wasn't turned up that high, but we did have the wind turned on so that it would initially shoot forward, then gently blow back. Dirty. Next, we're gonna talk about ejecting shells and making the flare feel like it's inside the scene, but first, we must feed the beast. If 
career budding filmmaker, entrepreneur, innovator, domain.com is a place to go when the next idea hits you. I know we've said it a million times that the list of available domain extensions is growing, but now you have the opportunity to name your site and build your brands ways that was never before possible. You can choose from a growing list of 400 plus domain name extensions like .com, .org, .design, and .club. They give you some love and they're giving you 25% off their already affordable prices. When you buy domain names, web hosting, and email, just use the coupon code FILMRIGHT at domain.com's checkout. And when you think domain names, think domain.com. Logo. Jumping right back in. So before adding those small touches that make the whole thing feel like it lives within the scene, we're gonna add in a shell. For this, we were able to get away with just using a shell video as a 3D layer. We timed it right and then hand keyframed the position and speed of it falling and spinning down. Of course, since it does go behind the gun, we had to mask out the gun as well. And then we applied color correction to the shell so it fits in the scene. After that, we added a lot of little touches that make a whole lot of difference, which we talked about in last week's 10 tips for better gun effects episode, which you can find a link to that in the notes below. And the last thing I'll do is add real muzzle flashes over top of everything. As it stands, it looks good, but a little too fluffy, as Seth Worley would say. As it stands, it looks good, but it's a little too fluffy. Hmm. God, I'm good. So I'll grab a few muzzle flashes from our pack and then place them in one after the other, each one only lasting one frame and then having them grow and scale following what we have in place already. Then I'll put them all in add or screen blending mode depending on the shot and then boom, a convincing looking slow-mo gunshot. Logo. But that's it for today. Again, don't forget about our sale. So much money off goodness happening right now. So go here or check the notes below. And remember to do the Twitter thing right here. And I'll see you guys next week when I get killed for not knowing how to properly order three beers.